Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is in a cross which individual is likely to be more prepotent one with the genotype as follows or one with the genotype as follows. First of all, what is the definition of the prepotency? Maybe many of you just first time hear this term. So prepotency is the ability of the individual to stamp its characteristics on the offspring to such extent that they resemble the appearance more closely than usual. It is the property of the characteristics and not the individual breed or sex. When two individuals are mated, one may have more influence than the other on the offspring. Similarly, uh, some lines and breeds are more prepotent than the others. However, prepotency can't be passed on from one generation to another unless it is possessed by both sires and dams. Now let's return to our problem, how many genes we have here. Uh, so we have gene A, B, C, D, E and F, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 genes, all loci and 6 genes and loci in second animal. In other words, if we cross this animal and this animal, the progeny would resemble which parent? First parent or second parent? Of course, we are talking here about probability that progeny would resemble whether in most of the cases this parent or this parent. Let's assume that these traits are inherited as simple Mendelian genetics traits. For example, let's take gene A, parent 1 for the gene A is heterozygous and parent 2 is homozygous dominant for this trait. That means that characteristics in these animals are going to be the same. For example, if it is, uh, say, dominant allele specifies black color and recessive allele specifies white color, both animal 1 and animal 2 are going to be black. Now let's analyze what we can expect in their progeny. Who is going to affect more progeny? Parent 1 is heterozygous, so capital A, small a, and parent 2 is homozygous dominant. Now when we make simple Punnett square, let's take a look what we will see in a progeny. Capital A, capital A, capital A, small a, capital A, capital A, and capital A, small a. As you see, 100% of the progeny are going to have the same phenotype as parent 1 and 2. None of the parents for this trait are going to be dominant over the other or would influence appearance of this trait in a progeny. So progeny are going to have the same phenotype as parent 1 and 2. As for the trait number 2 or which specified by gene B, both parent 1 and 2 are heterozygous. That means that the influence on the genotypes and phenotypes of the progeny are going to be the same. Three quarters of the progeny, okay, let me show you. So three quarters of the progeny are going to be the same as parent 1 and 2. So take a look. And one quarter are going to be of the different genotype. So capital B, capital B here, capital B, small b here, capital B, small b here, and small b, small b here. One quarter would look for this trait unlike any of the parents, but three quarters would look like parent one and parent two. So for this trait, both parents' influence are going to be the same, equal. So far, for these two genes, for these two traits, none of the parents would be more prepotent than the other. Now let's analyze the third characteristics which specifies by gene C and we see that parent 1 is homozygous dominant and parent 2 is homozygous recessive. So parent 1 is homozygous dominant and parent 2 is homozygous recessive. And as you see, of course, 100% of their progeny are going to be heterozygous and that means that 100% uh, of the progeny phenotypically 
would resemble parent one. So let's put this arrow here, which would specify that in the progeny, we would see that for this trait, progeny would resemble parent one and not parent two. So if you would have only three genes, we would say that for first two characteristics, progeny would resemble the same phenotype as parent one and two, but for the third characteristic, uh, auto rate would look like parent one. Now let's compare locus D where we can find gene D and parent one is heterozygous capital D and small D and parent two is homozygous dominant. And when we build simple Punnett square, we again can find that progeny are going to be of the same phenotype as parent one and parent two. For example, if this would specify whether the animal has strips or not, this animal has strips, this animal has strips, and all the progeny also would have strips. So for this trait, none of the animals are going to be more prepotent than the other. Next gene sets, uh, locus E, gene E, parent one is heterozygous, parent two is homozygous recessive. And it is interesting because many of you may think that parent one would be more prepotent than parent two, but actually take a look what's going to happen. So genotype of parent one, capital E, small e, and genotype of the parent two is small e, small e. Now let's build simple Punnett square again. And let's take a look what's going to happen in a progeny. Capital E, small e here, capital E, small e here, small e, small e, small e, small e. For this trait, 50% of the progeny would resemble parent one, but 50% of the progeny would resemble parent two. So again, both animals are going to be equally prepotent for this trait. And as for the last trait specified by the gene F, animal one is heterozygous or capital F and small f. Animal two is homozygous dominant, capital F, capital F. And when we build simple Punnett square, again, what we are going to see. We are going to see that the progeny are going to be capital F, capital F, capital F, capital F, capital F, small f, and capital F, small f. In simple Mendelian genetics, if one animal is heterozygous, another homozygous dominant, that means that both animals has the same phenotype for this trait. 100% of their progeny also would have the same dominant trait as their parents. Those half of them are going to be heterozygous, but still it's going to be the same phenotype as homozygous dominant. And what our conclusion are going to be? Our conclusion is going to be those parent one and parent two has different genotypes, but they have the same phenotypes except uh, for the gene C. And all the progeny are also going to have the same phenotype as both parents, but for the trait specified by gene C, all the progeny are going to have the same phenotype as parent one. So the progeny would resemble more parent one than parent two. And of course, in the progeny, for example, for the trait E, half of the progeny would resemble parent one and half would resemble parent two. So numbers are going to be equal. So we can say that parent one is going to be more prepotent than parent two. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day and see you in the next video. Goodbye.